to to have Fujito giving giving a talk today in our seminar. Um, you know, Fujito had. Uh, if you look at his CV, he has so many accomplishments. You know, he's been he's been writing so many awesome papers in theory. So I'm I trust that everyone in this audience has at least came across to to Fujito's work. So you know, instead of instead of going through a long long introduction, I'll take inspiration from um, you know watching Netflix last evening and just simply do a Letterman thing where I'm going to say that you know our next speaker needs no introduction. So uh, Fujito, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, you know, the, the virtual screen is yours. Uh, it's about one hour, one hour and 15 minutes, including questions. Uh, it's great to have you. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, so it, it, it really great pleasure to uh, talk uh, in front of this audience. Um, the, <clears throat> the, I will present the, this uh, project with Yongki Che and uh, Jim Kim. Uh, on uh, monotone combative statics. Um, so as you can see in the screen, I have also a title in the parentheses talking about uh, characterization of pride optimum. And the reason for this is that the one of our main results on uh, on this combative statics uh, uses a result from another paper of ours and which characterizes pride optimum IP. And that part is uh, with Jin Wu, uh, Yong and Chris Ryan uh, from UBC. Okay. So let's uh, let me begin. Okay. So um, the um, the topic of this talk is uh, about comparative statics. I, I guess everybody knows what comparative statics is. Uh, we, this is a study or analysis of how economic prediction change uh, as the parameter of the model changes. Like UTT function changes, so there may be a demand shock for consumers when then what happened to the farm's behavior, uh, things like that. Okay, and uh, um, the monotone combative statics, uh, which I call MCS today, is a particular uh, type of uh, combative static method. And uh, 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 the, the, uh, the feature is that the instead of using a lot of uh, uh, analysis and, and uh, it depends on depending on the smoothness of the function and so on, so the MCS use the idea based on the order over the sets. So that that uh, namely, so we think of some outcome space and space is endowed with partial order. Okay. And then the function or correspondences we are interested in um, have some monotonicity feature. Uh, okay, I will more explicit later. And uh, um, with respect to the order, which is endowed to the space, and using that uh, that structure, we can make some uh, some prediction about what happens when the environment changes. Okay, so the so this literature has been quite successful in making making predictions, especially without putting a lot of assumptions on the functional forms of certain, uh, well, such as the differentiability uh, and so on. So in a certain sense, the, well, uh, in a certain sense, they, uh, this theory can make a prediction that is uh, not so, um, which is kind of robust in a certain sense. Okay, um, so that's good. The, the challenge of this, uh, this literature, at least one of the challenges, is that, well, uh, when we talk about economic predictions, the predictions are usually not unique, right? So even when uh, we think of uh, individuals' optimization problem, uh, the a optima uh, may not be a unique prediction. And if we think of other economically interesting questions, such as Nash equilibria in games, or stable matching in two-sided matching um, and social choice, the, 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 the let's say, pilot optimal choices, then these predictions are typically not unique. There are all sorts of multiplicity. So uh, that kind of like tells you that, well, when we talk about the, how the e prediction changes, let's say that whether the e price charged by the farm in the equilibrium goes up or not, uh, we cannot just use the e, primitive order, uh, right, uh, to just say that whether the e, e, e prediction moves up or down, because we need to have some uh, some notion of the e, e, e order over the sets, right? So, so because the, uh, 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 predictions are given as sets, so we need to have some kind of language to talk about whether the set moves uh, uh, up or, uh, or down. Okay. 
So that's a sort of like a conceptual challenge. And of course, people have studied this question. Okay, so let me talk about uh, two specific uh, order of sets, okay, which will play uh, important roles for today. Okay, so a little no bit no no notation. So let X be a set we are interested in, uh, so outcome space. And uh, this uh, larger than or equal to sign uh, signifies a partial, uh, partial order over X. Okay, so these are orders, uh, uh, you know, uh, binary relation, uh, which can compare any two elements uh, from, uh, from X. Okay, uh, now we would like to define based on this, the e e order uh, over sets, which is, to be able to say, take two subsets uh, from X, uh, can we say one set is larger than one or another? And the, the, the most commonly used uh, uh, notion is called the strong set order. Okay, so, uh, um, so this is a notation I use. So uh, with uh, subscript, subscript uh, SS, a strong set. Okay, so uh, uh, take, two subsets of X, uh, X prime and X double prime. And I say that X double prime strong set dominates X prime, i.e. Larger, uh, larger than in terms of this strong set order relationship, if the following is true. Okay, so uh, for those of you who have seen this before, so uh, I, I'm just reproducing it. Um, so it's, uh, it requires the following. So take any, take any elements from each of the sets. So little x prime is from the first subset and x double prime is from the second subset. Then the take the, uh, uh, take the join uh, and the join is in the second set and the, um, uh, and the meet is in of these two elements uh, is in the first set. Okay. Uh, so join and meet are respectively the supremum of these two, uh, two, uh, uh, two elements. Uh, and the infimum of these two elements. So for example, if we think of, let's say two dimensional uh, uh, Euclidean space, okay, let's say, and the e, e primitive order is just the, e, e, the usual uh, um, product order based on the, uh, 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 on the uh, larger than or equal to uh, uh, relationship, then the e joins is a component wise maximum and the meet is a component minimum. So the sort of like join is kind of larger, larger thing, and we require that the larger, uh, uh, sort of larger, uh, larger things, uh, larger than uh, both of these elements is in the second set, and supposedly a larger set, and a smaller thing is in the smaller set. Okay, so this is a definition of of, of this relationship strong set order. Okay, so in case. Uh, you have never seen this order, uh, please don't worry because uh, this looks somewhat complicated to me at least. And indeed, uh, our point is that we are also interested in another uh, set order, which is weaker. And also we, at least uh, I, uh, find to be quite uh, intuitive. So this set is called the weak set order. So this is another uh, set order, okay. The, so, I take two uh, subsets, X prime and X double prime. And I say that uh, X double prime, weak set dominates uh, X prime if uh, the following two things are true. So let's focus on the first one because the second one is kind of mirror image of the first condition. Uh, so I, I call it uh, um, um, upper uh, weak set domination. So what's the upper set, uh, weak set domination? Um, it requires the following take any element X prime from the first set, then there is some element X double prime from the second set, uh, which is larger than it weakly. Okay, and the second uh, one is a mirror image. So take any element from the second set, then there's something that is smaller, uh, uh, smaller than the, uh, 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 smaller than the a, 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 a element from the uh, second set. Okay, so what, what does it say? It kind of says the following. So, Choose, we would like to kind of say that the second set X double prime is larger than the first set. And in order to say that we want the following to be true. So you can choose any, any prediction, let's say out of this first prediction X, uh, X prime, then I can find some, uh, some prediction from the second uh, prediction, which is uh, X double prime. And this uh, second prediction is higher in the, in the original uh, order. 
And uh, conversely, we can you can choose anything from the second set. I can find find you something smaller from the uh, first set. So this is the definition of weak set order. Uh, one observation is a strong set order implies weak set order. Uh, okay, and which is a matter of verification. Okay, so why do we talk about this? The first thing, uh, the strong set order has been used extensively in this previous literature on MCS, uh, Mountain Complex Statics, and one of the reasons is that well. Uh, it has a very good characterization uh, result. Okay. It, it, it related to the mountain complex statics in a nice way. Uh, namely, uh, the, here is a problem considered uh, analyzed by the Milgoman Shan. Ah, so I, 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 use, I refer to Milgoman Shan a lot, so I, I write MS oftentimes. So Milgoman Shan uh, considered the individual's optimization problem. So uh, think of some function f and uh, think of a uh, uh, maximization of this function f and denote uh, this uh, set of all the uh, optima uh, as m of f okay so this is the e, e argmax of f okay now imagine that the utt function so 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 utt function of this individual changes from u to v all right and milgram uh, shannon finds a sufficient conditions uh, such that the, when the UTT changes from U to V, the uh, set of optimizers uh, moves up in the strong set uh, notion, strong set sense. Okay, so M of V is strong set dominates M of U. Okay, and the condition which I refer to MS domination today uh, is composed of two things. So one is that this function V single crossing dominates U. And also uh, function U and V are quasi supermodular. Okay, so uh, let me not even the talk in too much detail about these conditions. So roughly speaking, the e, e, e function v kind of tends to like a higher uh, um, uh, higher outcomes than the e lower outcome compared to, uh, 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 so higher outcome compared to uh, utt function u. Okay, the reason, so again, so the point here is that the e strong set uh, order has been used quite extensively. Uh, one of the big reasons is that, well, uh, the, uh, the, uh, there's a known and interpretable conditions over UTT functions, uh, which guarantees that the e, e, e optimum, uh, uh, optimum solution for individuals moves up in terms of strong set order. Indeed, actually, we have, uh, I mean, they have uh, a kind of necessary e, e, necessity e, e condition, uh, which is actually the same thing as these conditions, actually. And uh, so basically, that's kind of characterization. Okay, then uh, why do we also worry about this another order? And uh, uh, the reason is the following. So it turns out, however, I mean, despite this uh, and many, uh, many follow up papers uh, on in this literature, once we moves beyond the individual's optimization problem, the, it's very rare to be able to uh, make this MCS prediction uh, if you uh, insist on this strong set order. So like I said, strong set order is a, a, a sort of strong uh, requirement and indeed uh, stronger than this weak set order. And indeed, uh, the, uh, under, even under very strong conditions, the in many economic problems, we cannot establish the MCS. So as we will see today in the in our talk, uh, the Nash equilibrium, for example, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, uh, doesn't lend itself to this uh, prediction in terms of strong set order. So actually, here is an uh, example, sort you of illustrates the example. Pardon, just a clarification: Is sure. Quark Strolovici? If if you go to the previous slide, is Quark Strolovici also strong set order? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th th thanks. Right. So, Crossroad VG, for example, well, they have a bunch of uh, um, bunch of papers on this literature. So, one of the things closest to ours is uh, Core and Strode VG, like Milgram and Shannon, uh, looked at the uh, characterization of UTT functions uh, for uh, for the strong set of domination of individual optima. And the difference between MS and the Quastrovici is that, uh, uh, so 
Oh, okay. So this is something I kind of goes over. The uh, Milgaman Shannon uh, showed that these conditions, uh, the uh, MS domination, uh, is necessary as well as sufficient for uh, the individual individual optima to move up in strong set order for all sub lattices. Uh, so when when the the uh, domain uh, changes. Um, uh, the domain so, so for this result to hold for uh, all problems uh where they they vary the uh, choice set uh as uh, uh, all sub lattices out of this x so uh, uh, so so uh, and the quorum story looked at the case in which uh this subset uh, uh subsets to choose from i.e. the choice uh, uh, choice set varies uh, uh, only from the set of individual uh, of indiv uh, intervals rather than all possible uh, uh, sub lattices but then okay. uh, then again the notion of domination is the same basically yeah thanks yeah sorry i was i was quite unclear on this uh, this part actually so or uh, and uh, uh, yeah so we actually looked at the uh, this uh, um uh, cases in which the domain is all subsets or uh, all, all sublattices, and uh, also in the case uh, in which the uh, choice domains are only uh, intervals. So uh, I probably will not have too much time to uh, be more specific than that today. Okay, so here is a illustrative example. So imagine that we consider two player games. Uh, okay, so let's say two firms may be engaging in price competition. Okay, and uh, x1 axis is a, a strategy space for all player one, and x2 is a strategy space for player two. Let's say prices for all farm one's goods, prices for uh, farm two's good. And the so this these curves are best response uh, uh, curves. Okay, so b1 uh, describes the farm one's best response uh, against any possible prices uh, set by farm two and vice versa. So let's imagine that is a, a problem here. And the what is a, a set of Nash equilibria? Uh, that is well uh, these three points, right? So the intersections of uh, best response curves. So now imagine that there is. Um, demand shock, positive demand shock for farm one's product, which makes the uh, farm one uh, to set higher prices uh, okay, in the in the best response. So namely, the best response curves for farm one moves to the right. Okay. And uh, ah, so we could, uh, we could uh, sort of micro fund this, this kind of moves uh, in such a way to satisfy all the conditions from middle and Shannon uh, the uh, single costing and so on. Okay, so uh, the, here is a Nash equilibria. So now uh, uh, the new Nash equilibria are these uh, white dots, okay, white circles. Um, so intuitively, when the farm one's uh, best response moves to the uh, moves up, uh, we so we expect that the Nash equilibria also moves up, meaning the uh, uh, equilibrium prices charged by the farms may go up. Okay, is it happening here? Well, not if we insist on strong set order here. Okay, so i.e. the uh, compare the set uh, these three dots and white uh, these three white dots. The uh, the white dots do not strong set dominates the uh, black dots. Why? For example, uh, take Take this point. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, so this is a uh, Nash equilibrium uh, from the uh, after the change of the uh, demand. Uh, take this point uh, from one. Uh, so, sorry, the one of the Nash equilibrium before the change, uh, and the strong set uh, order would uh, require that take the uh, uh, take the e e join and that uh, equilibrium after the change of the uh, situation. It is not the case. So take the, the join of these two points is actually this point itself. Okay, and this is not a Nash equilibrium uh, according to uh, according to this uh, um, uh, after the change. Okay, so it's so we cannot compare a Nash equilibrium with respect to strong set order. We can still uh, say though that weak set order actually works. So uh, weak set order says take any Nash equilibrium from the from the first one. 
first set of equilibria, we can find some equilibrium that is higher. For example, uh, take this one, then we can find this one. Okay. And uh, vice versa, so take any equilibrium from the, uh, after the change of the uh, UTT function, best response, then we can find a smaller uh, Nash equilibrium from the, uh, uh, from the original environment, which is this one, for example. Okay, so the so so in this example we have seen that Nash equilibria moves up not in strong set order but in weak set order. Okay, so what do we do? We do? So the so the so this is the end of uh, my long introduction. The what do we do? Generally speaking, the so we basically consider. Uh, this weak, uh, weak set order and do the monotone combative statics. So we call it WMCS for short, weak monotone combative statics. And uh, because the prediction uh, sort of required that the order is weaker in order to say that, uh, you know, declare that prediction moves up or down, uh, the condition we need to make such, uh, such claim uh, can be made weaker than the previous uh, literature. And the, indeed, it turns out to be the case in many situations we looked at. Okay, so that's that's a sort of like a uh, high level summary of what, what I do. Okay, so namely, and we look at many different problems and uh, uh, find the conditions under which the solution moves uh, moves up, okay, according to weak set order. Okay, so we actually look at four different problems. One is individual choices, like uh, Milgram Shannon and Kuan uh, Stovich that uh, Alex uh, mentioned. Um, and we look at social choice problem and look at Pareto Optima. And uh, we look at uh, equilibrium in games and two sided matching. Uh, so we do not have uh, enough time, uh, I think, uh, to talk about every uh, all these things. So I will just choose the some result from this part optimal choices and games today. Okay. And so that's a sort of long this introduction. I have some uh, uh, side comments on on this. But if you have any questions uh, so far, please feel free. Okay, so let me move on, on to the result. Okay, so let me just uh, say one word about this uh, uh, Shannon and Stolvici. So we all, already have uh, had a conversation. So these papers uh, characterize uh, conditions under which uh, the, the, the individual optimum uh, uh, moves up with respect to strong set order for bunch of optimization problem. So by varying uh, the subsets of choices uh, to choose from, and they make a characterization of, of always establishing the a strong set order, uh, uh, sort of uh, this uh, strong modern normal statics in terms of UTT function. So we basically do the exactly the same thing, uh, except we use a weak set order uh, uh, to uh, 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 the, the comparison with respect to weak set order. Okay, and uh, obviously the uh, uh, conditions on UTT functions to make this uh, statement becomes weaker. And how weak? Well, uh, let me not go into the details, but we have some results in the paper. Uh, now let me talk about something different from this literature. So I'm going to talk about part optimal choices. And somewhat surprisingly, we have not found any previous results on monotone combative statics doing this question, uh, analyzing this question. We kind of suspect that maybe the reason is that even under very strong conditions, we cannot uh, establish the a strong set uh, domination uh, uh, MCS. Maybe that is the reason. Okay, so let me be a bit more formal here. So here is a setting. So uh, imagine we have uh, I, which is a finite set of individuals. Uh, X is a set of possible social choices. Okay, so this is perhaps a very standard uh, setting. One thing that may or may not be totally standard is that uh, we assume that this X is a uh, partially ordered set. Okay, so we have some partial order defined over X. So we can imagine maybe in the case of single like uh, um, like Downsian uh, hoteling type uh, problem, maybe X is a totally ordered set. Uh, so that's an example. If we have multi-dimensional version of hoteling problem, uh, then uh, um, 
you know, then, then the X may have uh, two policy issues. This is this is usually modeled by a partial uh, the partial order, order set. Okay, the we end up each individual with utility function. So u sub i is a utility function for or, or uh, individual i. Okay, and when I write u without subscript, that's a profile of utility functions. Okay, and p of u uh, denotes a set of prior to optimal choices, which I call p or c, and the uh, utility function uh, uh, profile u. Okay. Um, okay. So why are we interested in this problem? Well, first of all, uh, I think we are interested. Uh, it's interesting to analyze prior to optimal. Uh, but, uh, but per se, another reason is later we will uh, analyze games and uh, um, give sufficient condition to make a uh, prediction about Nash equilibria. Uh, we actually consider the e e e even a player who is not uh, possible, who may not be e not have a complete preferences. So for example, um, one interpretation of the part of optimal choices may be a choice of an individual. Uh, who does not have uh, yeah, complete preferences, instead uh, he or she has several criteria. So uh, uh, little i is particular criterion to choose uh, outcome from uh, using the uh, criteria to use. And the, this person's uh, choices may be just all the, uh, uh, all the uh, 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 alternatives that are not dominated by all the, or with respect to all uh, uh, all, all aspects, all criteria. So if, to describe such an incomplete preferences, maybe this part of the choice may be interesting. And we can think of a game played by in, players with the incomplete preferences. Okay, I will talk about that later. Okay, so coming back to this setting. So the question we ask is, uh, we identify conditions on UTT functions, U and V. So imagine that UTT functions uh, for everybody change from U to V. Uh, okay. And under what conditions, the question is, under what conditions can we say that the Pareto optima uh, moves up uh, when UTT function changes U from U to V with respect to uh, uh, weak set order? Okay, so that's a question we ask. Right. Uh, so we have two main results on this uh, this problem. Um, so first, so let's imagine that we are in a world with totally ordered uh, policy space. Okay, so think of of maybe hoteling uh, um, uh, type uh, problem. Okay, uh, the condition turns out to be simple. So uh, imagine, so suppose one and two uh, holds. So X is a compact uh, and totally ordered space. And uh, um, the utility functions are, are upper semi-continuous, mainly just to uh, uh, guarantee the existence of optima and uh, so on. And the important part is that V single crossing dominates U. Okay, so this is the same condition uh, for uh, as a Milgram Shannon. Actually, under these conditions, we can say that the Pareto optima moves up uh, with respect to weak set order. Okay. The proof is kind of not too uh, involved. So we uh, the, uh, when the, so let me largely skip it. So the, the what is very simple about this totally ordered case is, well, when the uh, uh, space is uh, totally ordered, single dimensional, the, uh, there are highest uh, Pareto optimal point and lowest Pareto optimal point, so to speak. Well, infimum or uh, supremum to be more precise. And then the, uh, you know, the, this, if the uh, supremum and the infimum sort of moves up uh, uh, when, the, when the UTT functions tends to like the higher actions, which is probably natural, uh, kind of like non-surprising. Okay. So let me talk about something a little bit more surprising perhaps. Okay. So now, uh, now we uh, think of a case which is the general uh, partially ordered set. So now X doesn't have to be totally ordered. Uh, maybe we have two policy dimensions. Okay, so uh, X1 and X2. So what can we say about it? So here is a statement of the theorem. It, it's a little bit of mouthful because we need to uh, uh, make a lot of assumptions as it turns out. But let me just sort of walk through. So we have sufficient conditions uh, written here. Then the conclusion is that um, the a, a part of optima under UTT profile V is higher than the part of optima under UTT profile U. Okay, 
the conditions are here. So one, um, we, one and two, so the space is required to be convex and compact, and it's actually lattice. Uh, and the second, the UDT functions are upper semi-continuous again. Uh, in addition, concave, supermodular, and uh, increasing the difference uh, domination uh, relationship uh, uh, exists between V and U. Okay. Uh, the, the, so uh, let me just, let me not say, talk about all of the conditions here, um, but let me just note that supermodularity and the increase in differences are also among the typical conditions imposed in MCS. Okay, they are uh, stronger than the equation uh, supermodularity and single crossing. Um, okay, the uh, but the, both they kind of say that the uh, when you when you teach functions changes from U to V, they tend to like a higher uh, higher actions. Okay, so the um, sort of like a, a situation we try to capture by these conditions are somewhat similar to those in the previous one, like uh, Minogue and Shannon. And uh, with, without this detail aside, so the one interpretation of this result is uh, again under. So when we impose conditions, which which analyst uh, tends to be happy to assume uh, when look, we look at the MCS for individual choices, okay. Uh, in fact, the uh, prior optimal choices move uh, uh, move up, it's a little bit like expected in a certain sense. Okay. So Fujito, uh, yes. Like uh, just a clarification. So I think what surprises me is that. I, I see that you require both supermodularity and increasing differences. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, do, do you have specific examples to show that each of these assumptions is required? Um, uh, I, I think the reason why I'm asking is because mm -hmm. in many settings, they're actually equivalent, right? So, um, ah, okay. So, so th actually, think of quasi linear settings. I think in, in there, supermodularity and increasing differences are basically the same thing. You pass ah. everything through. through. Um, oh, actually, so my understanding is that in our, uh, in our setting, this condition needs to be stated separately uh, because the, the supermajority speaks uh, to uh, to the, uh, is a condition about uh, uh, each of these UTT functions with respect to the uh, policy space. And uh, and uh, meanwhile, uh, when I talk about increasing difference domination, it's a relationship between two functions v and u. So perhaps uh, oftentimes we can uh, we we parameterize utt functions v and u by you know uh, adding one more uh, uh, one one more variable, right? Like uh, parameter t. Uh, so, but uh, because we kind of separated out this. Uh, uh, um, the, we, we did not put this uh, uh, another variable, so we kind of need to state the increasing difference uh, separately between two functions. Okay. Uh, Fujito, so I think the weak set order has uh, two different components, right? Okay, the mm -hmm. one is bigger than the other, and the other one is smaller than yes. the, the first one. Uh, but I think maybe Pareto optimal case, I think you might be interested in only one side. And uh, is it possible to mm -hmm. relax the sufficiency condition to achieve just the one of the inequalities? Mm. Um, good question. Um, of course. Um, so we do not know uh, if we can weaken the condition. Uh, so the proof, uh, the proof we have um, can show both of them. And uh, as we, uh, actually, I'm planning to talk a bit about the proof of this result, actually. And the way we do it uh, kind of needs to uh, sort of like, hmm. OK, so let, let me actually show the proof and then uh, uh, sort of like mention why we do not know how to actually weaken the condition further. Uh, so by the way, the, the, thanks for the comment. So the, in the game theory section I'm planning to talk about just a little bit later. Uh, it turns out that actually uh, the, uh, there are some games in which the uh, lower uh, weak set order uh, 
uh, domination can be established, but not uh, 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 upper upper one. So, for example, the okay. Let me actually talk about it now because that's an interesting question. Um, so, we looked at the generalization, a general class of uh, Bertrand competitions. So, a uh, firm's uh, set prices. Okay, and uh, possibly a uh, good uh, differentiated. So, uh, okay. Um, so, in this. Uh, in this class of problems, we found that the uh, best response correspondence um, is uh, uh, like uh, monotonic in the uh, in terms of weak, uh, uh, sorry, a lower weak set order. So, uh, i.e., when other firms uh, lower the price, then one of the best responses for your firm is to also lower your price weekly. However, upper one doesn't work, uh, as it turns out. Uh, the reason is. Um, so imagine that currently the uh, uh, other firms are setting a price that is even lower than your firm's uh, marginal cost of production. Then one of the uh, one of the best response for your firm is to hire very high charge uh, high, charge a high high price. Now firms other firms raise their prices and higher than your firm's marginal cost. Then your best response is to actually produce uh, by charging a small amount of a smaller price. So uh, the upper uh, upper uh, uh, domination uh, doesn't work uh, in this case. However, the lower domination works. So we can still uh, end up uh, being able to show things like existence of Nash equilibria and uh, more certain monotone comparative statics. Uh, but similar examples uh, have not been found for this part of optimality E so far. Okay, so let me go on to the uh, proof of this one. So, what is a proof? Well, uh, so the the so the very rough intuition is that uh, okay, Pareto optima are kind of hard to analyze. So we have many people, and uh, you know, um, the, we don't know much about the structure. Um, so, but the one idea is okay. So Pareto optima choices are hard to analyze, but individual utility utility maximization is easy. So uh, does that ring, uh, uh, ring us uh, about something? Well, there's some notion that Pareto Optima can be characterized as a weighted utilitarian welfare maximization, which is, uh, so weighted utilitarian welfare means the uh, average uh, uh, average of individual utility function. Okay, so take, take the weighted average, okay, with some weight, and then the, uh, uh, then the, uh, Maximize uh, 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 this uh, average UTT. Okay, and then there's so so now um, so this latter thing, so the weighted welfare uh, welfare is easy thing to uh, analyze because it is it is like a UTT of a, a sort of representative agent who happens to have a UTT function which is average of individual UTT function. And if we change the uh, weight, uh, welfare weight on these people, then maybe we can get the entire set of Pareto optimal choices. Okay, so some version of this uh, this kind of uh, uh, statement uh, is actually very standard and even in MWG. However, for our purposes, it turns out that this does not work actually. The reason is that the existing results do not actually characterize the entire set of Pareto optima. They are either just sufficient condition or just necessary conditions, and uh, so we cannot make a, a make a good use of it. And so here's an example. So imagine that we have two people, one and two. You, so this is the UTT possibility set. So this gray area, including the e borders, represents all UTT pairs achievable. And what is what is a Pareto optima in this in this set? Uh, it's exactly this curve, including this point uh, endpoints. Okay, and uh, if you take some weighted average, let's say one, uh, let's say one half and one half for uh, each person, then you know you maximize uh, uh, you maximize in this direction, and you hit some uh, point like this. Okay, so that's Pareto optima. That's nice. Okay, uh, so this point. Uh, has more weight for uh, individual too, uh, but uh, you can still maximize uh, the weighted welfare and so on. However, this point U, for example, cannot be obtained by this way. Okay, so if you have any positive weight, then uh, you cannot max. So this point maximizes uh, player one's UTT first, and then uh, out of it uh, maximizes player two's UTT here. 
but you cannot get this by considering any positive weight for for both players. Then, um, so that is to say that if we think of a um, uh, uh, strictly positive welfare weight for everybody, then we cannot get the entire set of the optimal uh, optimal choices. Uh, then uh, maybe we could think of weak, uh, like a weekly positive weight for everybody. So let's say 100, uh, weight one for player one and weight zero for player two. Then can we get the uh, uh, part optima? Well, we can. So this point is the maximizer of this, uh, 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 this welfare weight, but uh, all other points down here are also maximizing this uh, uh, weighted welfare, but they are not part efficient. Right. So, which is to say that if we think of all possible welfare weights, including possibly zero weight for some people, then uh, the Pareto optimal um, uh, Pareto optimal choices does uh, maximize uh, such uh, such welfare, but some some points that are not Pareto optimum uh, also maximize such welfare. So we cannot get the. This is only a necessary condition uh, for Pareto optimum. Okay. So, so what do we do about it? So basically, we get a uh, new result, uh, which give actual characterization of all Pythoptimal choices, exactly by the uh, set of Pythoptimal choices. Okay, and uh, uh, so here, uh, so we, which is namely, um, characterize the Pythoptimal choices by a sequential utilitarian welfare maximization. So sequential is a difference. So here is a statement. So given our conditions, well, which is from uh, earlier theorem. So mostly the, the closed valuedness of uh, sorry the, the set of utility possibility sets should be closed and uh, and uh, and convex. Okay. Then the the a, a outcome is Pareto efficient if and not if the following is true. So what do they say? So there exists some sequence of uh, welfare uh, weights. Okay, so a uh, phi sub k is, uh, is sort of like one of one of uh, uh, capital K different social welfare weights, and uh, each of them should be non-negative. And the last one, uh, the uh, phi capital K, should be strictly positive, i.e., everybody has uh, has a weight in the calculation welfare calculation, and such that and this point x is a solution. To the following problem. Okay, so the first problem is a usual uh, uh, weighted welfare maximization. So, um, so argmax of weighted welfare, uh, average UTT for UTTs. But then that solution is not uh, is uh, denoted x one. Now, um, now they might include Pareto optimal and Pareto suboptimal choices, like in the uh, previous example. Now think of another uh, another uh, welfare maximization problem. Now use the second welfare weight, so phi sub two. Then maximize out of the solution from the first welfare maximization problem, and set it to be x two and that that uh, do the same uh, capital K times, and uh, get the uh, get the solution uh, final solution. Okay, so so uh, so uh, the usual welfare maximization has just one uh, 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 one uh, stage of uh, weighted welfare maximization. We do it uh, uh, several times. Okay, so it turns out this gives a characterization. So here is a, a previous example. And so how do we get a point like this one? You um, here is a way. So first. Uh, the first welfare weight is this phi, 100% uh, for player one and zero. And uh, the solution is this line segment. So this uh, only this point is applied optimum and everything else here are applied to suboptimal. Among these solution, we go to the second uh, uh, step, which is uh, take a welfare weights, for example, one and one. Okay, put equal weights for both players, then maximize. Then out of this point, uh, or this uh, this point uh, uh, is the unique solution. Okay, and indeed it turns out that uh, this way can characterize exactly uh, if we vary these uh, welfare weights sequences and take the union, then we can get the entire set of pi optima. Okay, so let me not show the proof of this fact, but then let's. Let's take this result uh, uh, at face value and let me explain how we use it to show uh, our, our comparative statistical result. Again, uh, okay, 
so the uh, we have uh, we uh, we will show the uh, uh, under these conditions written here uh, we get the price optimum to move move up okay okay so here's the last uh, step of this uh, proof of this uh, uh, this monotone monotone complex statistics result okay so given our uh, uh, our result so we can just we can fix some sequence of welfare weights, okay, non-negative and uh, eventually positive uh, welfare weights, and then look at what the solutions of, of this uh, sequential maximization problem are. Then uh, later take the union for all these uh, 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 optimizers uh, with respect to all such sequences. Then that will recover the entire set of pride optima. So that's the e idea. Okay. So let's let's think of this object, which is p sub this uh, sequence u. So this is a, a solution of sequential maximization problem uh, with respect to this uh, sequence of welfare weights. Okay, uh, and uh, when the uh, individual units are given by this u. All right, uh, okay, so we get the following result. Okay, so we claim that uh, um, this optimization problem, um, the solution to optimization problem with respect to utility function profile u is smaller in terms of strong set order compared to the corresponding uh, solution when the utility function profile is V. Again, V is, single, uh, the, uh, v, uh, is a higher utility function than U. Okay, so, uh, super, uh, the, they are super modular and V increasing dominates U. Okay, so why do we get this? We get this because of the following. Okay, um, the first thing to note is I have assumed that U and V are super modular and V increasing dominates U. And these properties are inherited when we take the weighted average of UTD functions, right? So basically, these conditions for individuals are given as a bunch of inequalities. So if we take the average of them, the same property holds. Okay, so now the point is that now the sort of individual representative agent, so to speak, Endowed with this uh, social average UTT function as it's his or her UTT function uh, satisfies the uh, 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 conditions for monotone comparative statics for individual choices. Namely, Milgram Shannon shows, among other things, that under this, for agent like that, the in individual choices uh, uh, will uh, move in the monotone comparative statics manner. Actually, strong set order manner. Uh, a little bit note is that actually, because we, instead of having this one welfare maximization, we have a sequence of welfare maximization, uh, we actually need to repeatedly use uh, Milgram Shan's result here. Okay. All right. Okay. Anyways, so the point is that when, when we fix the uh, welfare weights, actually, welfare weight sequence, then the subset of Pareto Optima corresponding to this uh, welfare weight uh, has this property that, well, uh, the e e e Pareto optima moves up when UTT function changes from U to V. But then, uh, again, the characterization of Pareto optima says that we need to take all the uh, union of these solutions with respect to all possible sequences of uh, welfare weights. Okay. So, which is this this one? So, Pareto optimal choices from UTT function U is a, a union of all such solutions, and the same is true for the UTT function Vs. Uh, for Vs. Okay, but then uh, when the e is so uh, here's the fact: the e, if if uh, uh, we have a bunch of uh, uh, pair of sets and uh, and each set. Uh, has uh, uh, the each set has this uh, uh, strong set order domination relation? Then, if you take unions, then union uh, is can still be compared, although in terms of weak set order. Okay, i.e., the if the right hand side is always larger than the uh, 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 left hand side, uh, and uh, add them up, then uh, the right hand side is still larger than the uh, left. Why? Well, it's actually verification because uh, um, take any point from the second uh, second set, uh, then you can find some uh, some of the component uh, 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 set from uh, to the, to uh, within the union. Then one of the uh, there's uh, some uh, element corresponding to the 
uh, in the right hand set that is larger. So uh, that is a, a that shows a upper set domination and likewise for the uh, 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 lower set domination. Okay. So that's uh, uh, basically end of the proof. Again, the idea is to use uh, this notion that Pareto optima can be associated with individuals um, optimization, and we know quite a lot from the previous literature about how the UTD changes uh, um, uh, uh, gives a monotone compatible statics uh, prediction for individuals. So let me actually give a uh, example uh, to make this point a little bit more. Uh, so imagine that we have two po two dimensional policy space, so x and y. So uh, okay, so and uh, this square uh, is a entire alternative space. Okay, and the uh, utility functions are uh, given by this quadratic loss. Okay, and uh, with this point, so let's look at the utility u one and u two. So there are two people. Okay, the one's bliss point is one and one, and two's bliss point is four and one. Then the Pareto optima is given by line segment between these two bliss points. Okay, so this is P of U. Now, imagine that we change the utility function from U to V, and one's, uh, uh, namely one's uh, um, uh, bliss point moves up uh, to uh, here, moves up here, and two's uh, uh, bliss point moves up here. Okay, uh, we can verify that this change um, uh, it actually it, it satisfies increasing uh, defense condition and other conditions are also satisfied. Now the prior optima is given by this one. All right, and uh, uh, so uh, this so intuitively again, so we want this uh, second set is higher than the first set, and indeed this is the case here in terms of weak set order. But again, the, uh, the, uh, this uh, second uh, set is not uh, higher in terms of, of uh, strong set order. For example, if we take this point and this point, then the uh, join is not uh, one of the part of the points uh, according to this uh, 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 under this UTD function. Okay. So it seems that under in, even in this kind of highly structured example, the strong set uh, uh, monocompatible statics doesn't work. Weak, weak one works here, though. OK. Uh, so that's it for the Pareto Optima. So can I, uh, so uh, if there's no question so far, let me move on to the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Nash equilibrium. So uh, I'm, I realize that we, I do not have too much time. So let me be a bit light here. Uh, OK, so what do we do? Well, um, as in the case of previous MCS, we use a fixed point theorem. So once we know how individuals behave uh, and uh, know when the best response correspondence moves up, you know, we can sort of build up on it and uh, couple it with uh, uh, the uh, fixed point theorem to get the uh, uh, existence of Nash equilibrium, for example. So we do that. Uh, so this uh, uh, this uh, Tarski theorem and Lin Zhao's uh, extension of it is a standard one uh, used in the literature. But then the uh, so this results cannot be uh, uh, kind of used in our case because um, so this f so f is a, a correspondence uh, from uh, from x to itself, and the assumption imposed uh, in the previous uh, fixed point theorem is that it's monotonic in terms of strong set uh, strong set order. Okay, uh, which is that um, the when the input moves up, then the, the output, which is usually uh, the in general uh, uh, set, moves up in terms of strong set order. Uh, okay. So we would like to weaken it in certain sense. Here is a, a, a result. Um, okay, so this is a, a fixed point theorem I use. So there are a bunch of differences. So or let me, uh, unfortunately, I do not have time to explain each of them. Uh, what I want to, uh, to emphasize is that the fixed point theorem um, still uh, considers a correspondence that is increasing, uh, increasing, but only in terms of weak set of monotony C. Okay, so i.e. Uh, when the input moves up, then the output from this uh, correspondence moves up only in weak set order. Actually, the upper weak set order or a lower weak set order only. Okay, so there's a chance that we can use this fixed point uh, theorem for this reason. Um, 
this theorem is not actually a generalization of uh, the uh, Tarski and Jaws theorem because there are some auxiliary conditions which is not included by the Tarski and Joe. But uh, uh, let me uh, let me skip the detail or discussion of that. Okay. So uh, another thing we can say is that well, uh, consider two two correspondences f and g. And both of them satisfy the conditions for or existing theorem, the fixed point theorem. Um, when the second uh, correspondence is larger than the, uh, uh, the first, i.e., for any input, the output from the second correspondence is larger than the first, then in terms of the weak set order, then the e equilibrium, so the, e the e fixed point, uh, fixed point also moves up in the same direction. Okay, so that's a. a, a uh, compatible set result for correspondences. Okay, so uh, why do we uh, why do we care about this? Uh, so we have two applications. One is two-sided matching, which I do not uh, plan to talk about today. Another uh, application is game theory. Okay, so we define that uh, class of games we call games with weak strategic complement IPs. So what is that? So here's a, a normal. It's a normal form game. So, uh, well, uh, set of players i, x is a set of strategy space, strategy profiles, and we, somewhat non-standard manner, uh, we endow each player with best response correspondence, okay, b sub i. And we call this game uh, to be a game with weak strategy convenient entities, uh, if two things are true. One is certain regularity condition I will not talk about. The first is the important one. The, uh, for each player i, um, this uh, best response correspondence uh, satisfies a bunch of conditions like non-emptiness, compact validness, uh, and the e, e, this best response correspondence is monotonic in terms of weak set uh, order. Okay, and namely, when others increase their uh, strategies, then the e best responses for uh, for you uh, is going to uh, move up in weak set order. Okay, and the result is that, well, existence and uh, compatible statics. So uh, first, uh, if this game has weak static convenient ID, then uh, that set of pure Nash equilibria is non-empty. And secondly, uh, imagine that we consider two games, and in game prime, the best response correspondence uh, moves up, uh, is higher than the best response, best response correspondence for the first, then the Nash equilibrium uh, is larger in the pr game prime compared to the non-prime game. All right. Okay. The proof is actually almost immediate. So uh, like in the previous literature, you know, we realize that the Nash equilibrium uh, is characterized as a fixed point, set of fixed points uh, over best response correspondences. And uh, as we, I have mentioned, there's a fixed point theorem. Uh, and uh, we verify that under the conditions we impose on the game, the best response correspondence is satisfies the uh, uh, conditions for the, uh, for the fixed point theorem, um, especially the uh, uh, monotonicity with respect to uh, uh, set order. Okay, let me just make two comments uh, and uh, try to wrap up in a minute. Uh, the, this requirement is weaker than the usual uh, uh, game with strategic component ID. So, for example, the quasi super major games by Milgram and Shannon. Okay, so they they basically impose a uh, 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 quasi super major ID on the utility function and the others in such a way that best response correspondence uh, uh, moves is increasing in strong set order, uh, but the, our condition is uh, weaker than that. Another thing to comment is that. Like I already said, the, the way we, uh, we define the game is a somewhat non-standard because we have not even endowed the individuals with UTT functions, actually. And of course, we can, uh, in principle, put UTT functions and impose conditions and show that the game is uh, has this within our class of games. Uh, however, we don't have to. So for example, uh, imagine again that uh, each, so this game is played by different countries, let's say. Each country is, like uh, player I is a country I, and uh, uh, the play, uh, and their best response is given by the private optima uh, from the viewpoint of the, uh, the citizens of country I, okay. Then uh, we, from the analysis from our 
Pareto optima before, uh, we know conditions under which this Pareto optima moves uh, moves in the uh, sort of right uh, right direction. So um, the, it moves up uh, uh, right in weak set order. So if these conditions are satisfied, then uh, you know the game played by these countries also uh, is can be shown to have Nash equilibria and the there's a mundo convergence. Okay, and uh, um, so uh, let me just, oh, this is actually, uh, I already kind of mentioned. So we have a, a, a application of this to uh, the class of generalized Beltran game. So now Beltran, um, so uh, strategy spaces are prices and there's a demand function. And the, 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 we have conditions for demand functions in order to make it uh, as a, uh, to fall within a class. So the important one is, the first one is standard. So the, the uh, demand for firm one uh, I is non-decreasing in its own price and non-decreasing in others' prices. Okay, so this is true for the usual Beltran and also uh, Beltran with differentiated product. Um, the second one is uh, kind of giving more condition, additional condition, which kind of says that the uh, uh, price elasticity, uh, the demand, the elasticity of demand for firm I's product uh, with respect to I's own price is uh, uh, decreasing in others' prices. Okay, so this is like how much you lose uh, in demand when you raise your price from PI into PI prime. Um, when others are charging P minus I, move prices up for others to P, P, P minus I, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, loss of proportional loss of demand when you uh, change the same price change for your own product is smaller. And the Milgram channel also has a related result. Uh, although uh, their conditions are actually kind of strong, uh, strong in the sense that um, they require this kind of condition for all uh, everywhere in this uh, demand, func uh, demand function, and which actually turns out to exclude the pure Beltran from their class of games. Uh, our, our class of games actually continues to include uh, the pure Beltran case uh, among others. So we have some generalization or, uh, so that the, we can make a, 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 a we can make a, um, like exist, we can show the existence of equilibria in built on uh, class of built -on games. And also we can get comparative statics, for example, with respect to the cost uh, uh, production, marginal cost of production. So when the cost moves up for uh, for every, every every firm, but if my cost doesn't change, then uh, then uh, I, I, I still charge higher price. And actually, uh, although I have not written here, we recently also, uh, that we, we can also show that the uh, payoff for firm uh, uh, moves up when others cost of production moves up. So these things can be obtained as a result of, uh, uh, of the MCS prediction. Okay, so I'm sorry that the last part is kind of rushing. So let me let me stop here. So thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Fujito. Uh, I'll stop the recording now. I just did so. So uh, thanks everyone.